morning, Kathy. Well, good morning to you. It's afternoon for me, but it's morning for you. And I'm, I'm sorry that my little friend is, is kind of down right now. Your throat's so oh, raspy. No. I've got COVID and I feel fine, except my throat. It's a little bit raspy. Well, but you know what? I feel, I feel really good. I'm going to send you uh, some healing vibes all the way from Houston, Texas. And Thank you. I'm, I'm just going to just hold a vision that um, you will be good as new very quickly. Yeah. And I, and I was going to, I was going to, um, I was going to teach bone therapy this weekend for, to new students. So I've had to cancel that. So I'm going to spend the weekend just relaxing, maybe even catching up with some Netflix. Good. I haven't done that for years. <laughs> good, good. Well, you know what? When the body needs to rest, it needs to rest. So I'm glad you're taking advantage of this time to uh, rest and heal. And, and um, I'm glad that you could join us today. Yeah, wouldn't we've, miss it for the world. We've got a very yeah. special guest. He's far away. He's far away from you and he's far away from me. So I'm going <laughs> to spin the globe. Yeah. Where did we land? On GMT, Greenwich Mean Time, London. <laughs> I can't well, wait well, to get there. I can't wait well, to get well, there. Kathy, Lund Greenwich Mean Time is what all all um all time is measured from. Well, thank you for London. that. Thank yeah. you for that, dear. Well, let's let's bring our guest down. I don't think we need to talk about time zones. So our guest today is John Andrews, and we're very excited to have him. So John. Come on down, dear. Come on down. <laughs> there he is. Yay. Yay. Hey, John. Hello, good everyone. You, John. Good evening. Yeah. Good morning. Good afternoon. <laughs> You've Better got it covered. Where you are in the world. You've got it covered. <laughs> Very good. Well, we're happy we've that you could join us We've covered every today. meeting, haven't we? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's evening here for me. <laughs> well, hopefully, we won't keep you too long, but we're, we're oh, very yeah. happy that you could join us um, today you're very and welcome. thank you very much for the invitation yeah you know I'm lots of people that. are curious about iridology and how people got started and and you know wh what inspired them so you know i'm just going to jump in here with the first question since since uh, froggy is a little down right now <laughs> so <laughs> uh can you tell us how long you've been an iridologist i think well i'll have to make a rough uh, rough calculation <laughs> I think about 27, 28, could even be 29 years I've been involved. Okay, that's that's a good long time. Uh, yes, <laughs> one or two years. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes so, it seems like a very short time. Sometimes it seems like double that amount of time. Exactly. I've, I've been in it for 26 Red years, Oscar. and it seems like I just blinked my eyes, and here I was. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and John, what inspired you to become an odontologist? That's a very good question, Christos. Very good question. Um, I was originally studying psychology and the course wasn't really resonating with me. Uh, so I decided to leave uh, that degree, and I, uh, which wasn't very uh, common at the time, uh, sort of, um, kind of sought out herbal medicine um, courses. And the people who were running a herbal medicine course, um, one of the instructors, introductory courses, I think one of the first courses I was doing, had an introduction or beginning part of iridology, just in a very basic way. And when something just resonates with you, just hits you, uh, when they started showing photos of the iris, you know, that was it really. It just resonated with me. It seemed very um, simplistic but confusing as iridology yeah. does when you're first beginning and probably after quite a few decades as well, it can seem the same. I've been very inspirational, but also very confusing at the same time. And so it just snowballed from there. So I think iridology kind of grabbed me as opposed to me going out and finding iridology, is that? Yeah. You could say. So I, I've kind of been on a life path with it and it's taken me in you know many different directions you know many different places all over the world I've, I've met you know many fantastic people you know on all continents of the world but apart from maybe Antarctica but maybe in the future um so it's uh, been a great inspiration for me and it helps simplify what I do as a practitioner you know that's the great beauty of iridology 
-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, so of all the eyes that you have seen, and I know you've seen many, and you've written so many books, beautiful books. I have uh, quite a few of your books. Thanks, can, yes. Can you tell? Can you tell us maybe what is your favorite sign, or maybe your favorite iris type, or okay, one That's of your favorites? Question, yeah, very good question. I think every it's a very difficult question to answer, kind of immediately because I, yes. I think every sign in the iris has a duality, so it could take us in a positive direction. It could take us in a negative direction, depending on, you know, how, how we're eating, how we're living, how we're responding to stress, you know, what's taking place in our life. Is it positive or negative? So I'm a great believer in that every iris sign has that duality. And I try and look at things from a positive aspect. And every iris sign shows us how we should be living, you know, because we're all yes. individual. We're all a synthesis of genetics you know, particularly in terms of the connections, not only with our parents, but our grandparents and beyond, emotionally, psychologically, you know, in terms of physiological traits. But also, we're also the, we can change how we need to live. And I, I believe that every sign in the iris, the pupil, the inner pupillary border, uh, the pupillary zone, the cholerae, the ciliary zone, signs in the conjunctive, the cornea, um, help to show how we should be living in balance, emotionally and physically, depending on what kind of uh, aspect of our life we're living, what junction we're at in terms of our life story as well at that time. So I think everything has a positive. So I try and look at the positive aspect for everyone and yeah. every sign or combination of signs shows a potential of what we can achieve and how we should be living in balance, you know, and that could be something simple in terms of managing stress, having enough sleep, the liquids we consume or not, diet, everything that we experience during our life. So the, you know, the iris, the pupil, everything connected with the eye shows us how we should be uh, living our life. And that's a very individual kind of experience and expression. So we all share, you know, characteristics in terms of iris colour, on a constitutional yeah. type, different signs, but we're all very individual. You know, there's no two colorettes alike mathematically. If we turn colorettes into a barcode and, um, you know, look at them mathematically, there's no two colorettes alike in the entire world, so, you know, so far found. So the, just the colorette alone is mathematically unique to us, and our right colorette is different to the left colorette of everyone mathematically. Yeah. So this is the, you know, we can extrapolate out to other signs as well. Mm -hmm. So the colorette's a very important factor emotionally, physically, with the endocrine system, gastrointestinal system, the immune system, the PMI networks, you know, how we express things emotionally, you know, our life experience, our body clock, you know, everything is uh, registered there. Yeah. So the colorette's a very important landmark boundary between the external world and the internal world. And what, probably one of the most important signs you'll find between the colorette and the pupil. And I'm probably more, quite well known for this sign. So it's the pupillary zone hypothalamus sign, I would say, is my kind of favorite sign to choose from. So it, it's a different sign to what many people may have been taught, but people who are aware of my modern neurology systems with the pupillary zone topography at um, 360 degrees or 60 minutes or 12 o'clock in the pupillary zone between the internal border of the colorette and the IPB or the pupil, there is the area for the pupillary zone hypothalamus. So if someone has a sign there, then they're gonna have more reactions and they're going to need longer in terms of therapeutic treatment to get back on track. We're going to need more therapeutic support on a more regular basis and, you know, emotionally and physically. And also um, they're going to need more adaptogenic support, herbal adaptogens, for example. So I know that from my own experience over the last, you know, 25 plus years with the pupillary zone hypothalamus side, 
the presence of the sign just magnifies and amplifies any other sign we have, or combination of signs, or even the constitution, for example, in all the stru other structures of the eye. So that one sign, the pupil of his own hypothalamus sign, some people just have one right or left pupil of his own, some people have two. So this can magnify what we need to approach with the patient or the client in terms of what they need therapeutically there and then, emotionally and physically, and also on a preventative level. And if someone hasn't got a sign in that area, then they will usually respond to treatment in a quicker, um, with a speedier experience, with a lack of stress and a lack of uh, <laughs> negative results. So the pupil of his own hypothalamus sign is, uh, is a very, very important sign. So it's part of the future of iridology because it highlights, in my experience, everything else we see. Oh, that's excellent. Excellent. <laughs> I love that. I love that about the duality in every sign. Yes. Brilliant. Yes. Well said. Yeah. Well said. <laughs> so when do you think we can get you back to the States for an IPA symposium? I don't know. Yeah, we'll have to have a look. That'd be fantastic. Yeah, it would be. It would be. I, I know that there are a lot of people within the IPA organization that would love to hear you speak and they would love to um, maybe hear some new research that you have or expanding yeah, cool. on old research, you know, and, and bringing yeah. it out again. But um, we need to get the name John Andrews back to the U.S. and uh, introduce a lot of new iridologists to you. So I look forward to that happening. Yeah, that'd be possible. fantastic, Kathy. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, if we can't travel, we can always do it online. <laughs> Absolutely. We always have a, a virtual symposium and, and uh, when we're able to get back together, we surely will. Surely will. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Well, Keep me posted. I love yeah, I will. I will. <laughs> So we've come to that little place where, where I'm going to ask you to pick a number between one and 36, and I'll read you a question at random. <laughs> That's quite some responsibility there, Kathy. It is. Uh, how, how about number 20? <laughs> number 20. Let me see number 20. We haven't had that number before. I don't think so. There's no telling what's, what it what's says. What's the most popular number? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, right here. Okay. Well, this was, this is kind of a long drawn out question here. My friend said that her brown eyes started to turn blue after doing juice fasts and fruit diets. Is this possible? My iridologist says no. What do you say? <laughs> okay. So is that directed at me? <laughs> That's directed to you. <laughs> yes. It's some. I, I know there's a lot of talk in this area, um, but it's something I've not seen. It, you know, in my own, own experience, um, and obviously I've looked at a lot of different irises and dealt with a lot of people over the years. So it's not something I've seen, even though people will resolve a particular condition. I've never seen someone's iris change colour, and the basic iris colour that you have is part of you, it's your template. And there's no pros and cons, um, there's no hidden advantage to having a particular iris colour. We've all got tendencies physically with each iris colour, and we've all got tendencies emotionally as well. So we're a combination of all those uh, tendencies, you know, positive, um, experiences and potentially negative experiences, depending on what's going on in life. So the fact that someone has a brown or blue iris um, or mixed iris is neither a positive, you know, advantage. Uh, people used to think it that it was, but you know, we've not really thought along those lines for many decades now. So the basic colour we are is a genetic uh, impression. You know, so that's our genetic constitution. So we can't switch, in my experience, from one to another because it's a genetic basis. Um, sometimes people think the iris is changing colour because the pupils have changed shape. 
and, and, and quite a common example that I see a lot of is in before and after photography, for example, is that the before time, the pupil was very dilated in madriasis. So the fact that the pupil is very dilated, the iris looks darker anyway, and there's less uh, kind of ambient light bouncing off the surface of the iris structure, uh, fibres and the structure. So the iris can look darker, pigments can look deeper and darker. Uh, the kunai and crypts can look a lot deeper and darker and more concentrated. Now, usually when people are unwell or under stress, their adrenal glands are under-functioning, so the pupils can be dilated because of that. Certain, certain uh, prescription medications, for example, can affect um, the reactivity of the pupil and the size of the pupil. So when people find a balance and they're not under stress and they're feeling in homeostasis, you know, probably after they've done lots of rebalancing and detoxification work, then their pupil will return to a normal diameter and a normal size and reactivity. So we have a normal amount of light, you know, more light bouncing off the surface of the iris. The pupil constricts and this helps to show the fibres and the structure. So it's not the fibres and structures and pigments that look lighter. That's an optical illusion. They're, they're the same as before, but the whole iris looks lighter because the pupils are normal diameter. So that's quite a common um, situation in, in, in terms of what you're asking with the detoxification. But I've never seen, you know, I've kind of looked for changes. I've never seen that wholesale change of someone's iris. I've seen someone's iris change colour um, with some rare uh, neurological conditions, very rare neurological conditions that I can't even, so rare, I can't even remember the name of them. And if someone has a brown iris, uh, sometimes the iris can depigment in these neurological conditions and the, the iris becomes more lymphatic and blue. But it, you know, that's not a positive situation because someone's experiencing you know, a life-limiting neurological condition. And sometimes with glauco uh, glaucoma medication, eye drops, for example, things like the Tanaprost and that type of family of um, eye drops for glaucoma, the iris can um, cause more pigment. So there can be more pigment developing in the iris. So the eyes can become darker because of that. So you've got to look at all these dynamics. Uh, and, and some prescription medication can change the colour of the cornea, for example, you know, the translucent uh, covering um, with the cornea and the conjunctival membrane. So sometimes they can change colour, but again, that's an optical illusion. It's not the iris really changing colour, it's the cornea or conjunctive, depending on the situation. But in to, you know, to answer that question, it's not something I've seen uh, in my experience. Nor have I. <laughs> yeah, me too. A mate, great answer. And I, I usually, instead of telling people you're bonkers, I just usually say, show me the pictures. I'd love to see the pictures there. Just say, oh, I haven't seen it myself, but I'd yeah. love to see the pictures. I mean, and a lot of the time, with before and after pictures, sometimes they're different people <laughs> in certain yeah. books you see. They're actually different people. Right. And you, can tell, right. you can tell from the colorate. So that's, I don't know, either uh, a mistake that's been made somewhere. It may not even be a deliberate error, <laughs> or it could be a deliberate error, you never know. Um, mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, a lot of the time, there's less light in the first photograph, so the eyes look darker, or there's enough light, but the pupils are dark. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, Very good. Dramatic looking contrast, but I've never seen it. So. Right. <laughs> Well, that's a perfect answer, and I'm not going to expound on that by any means because I feel the same that thing. Was great. I, you, yeah. you said it brilliantly, so yeah. you know what could I add to it? Nothing, nothing. <laughs> a very well, good way to explain it. Feel free. Well, um, John, thank you for taking time. I know it's late where you are. It is, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, I've been. Uh, I think I've been here about twelve hours today. Oh, oh my. my. Hours, hours. Yeah, well, it's time for you to go rest. <laughs> but thank you for uh, participating in, in iridology around the world. And I know it's going to be seen around the world. So just get ready. Everybody <laughs> is going to want to hear you. And uh, people may even reach out to you. So just get ready. <laughs>
Thanks, Kathy. Thanks, Christos. If anybody Thank needs you. to uh, contact me, they can always email me. Very yeah. good. Thank you very much, John. Very good. <laughs> yeah. I've Thank got, I've got um, a new book, Introduction to Modern Iridology, coming out this year. So I'll keep, keep you posted. We're just putting the yeah. finishing touches to that. Very and good. I've got a new website planned and also webinars and um, yeah. about six, seven books over the next 10 years are planned. Excellent. So, so the, awesome. most of those are kind of either written or partially written. <laughs> well, okay. tell, can you tell us your website? The website at the moment is johnandrewsiridology.net. Okay. Okay. Very good. <laughs> but it's a little bit out of date at the moment because it cannot be edited. But you can, you can get a kind of glimpse of what's been going on. As long as people can reach you. You know, we, we want this to be a, a way where if they have questions, that they can reach out to you and uh, maybe take a look at some of your books and, and um, yeah. you know, be a future student for you. So this, this is awesome. We thank you so much. Thanks. And thanks, John. We're going to get you, you we're going to get you to an IPA symposium as soon as possible. <laughs> That'd be fantastic. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Kathy. Thanks for arranging. Keep up the great work. Okay. Thank you very much. better as well, Christos. Thank you. I will. <laughs> yeah. Thanks okay. a lot, everyone. Bye. Bye. -bye.